The DPP HIV syphilis assay for whole blood contains the following components. The DPP test device, the whole blood sample loop, a black cap sample tainer for diluting specimens, and a green cap running buffer bottle. Note that the DPP test device has three colored lines in the test window. The first two are blue, and the third is green. Materials required, but not provided, include a clock, watch, or other timing device. Remove the DPP test device from the foil pouch and place it on a flat surface. Label the device with the patient identification number. Label the black cap sample tainer with the patient ID number. Then remove the top by unscrewing the white cap from the bottle. Obtain a venous or fingertip blood sample according to your normal laboratory practices. If you're taking a sample from a fingertip, wipe away the first drop of blood after pricking the finger and sample from the second drop. Touch the sample loop to the drop of blood, allowing the opening of the loop to completely fill with blood. Use the sample loop to transfer venous blood from a collection tube. Place the collected sample into the labeled black cap sample tainer. Ensure that the loop with the sample rests on the bottom of the bottle. Gently break the loop by applying pressure to the shaft at the break notch. Discard the loop shaft into a waste container. Place the white cap with the upper black cap back onto the sample tainer containing the loop tip. After securing the cap tightly, Gently shake the bottle back and forth for 10 seconds. Remember to mark the bottle with a sample ID. Applying the sample. Before you apply the sample, make sure the DPP HIV syphilis test is placed on a flat surface. Now, unscrew the upper black cap, keeping the white cap screwed onto the sample tainer. Hold it in a vertical position, but upside down, and gently squeeze two drops of the sample into the round sample well without touching the bottom of the well with the tip. Be aware that holding the bottle sideways will produce invalid results. Now wait five minutes. Applying the buffer. Ensure that the colored lines have disappeared from the test window before you apply the buffer. Then, remove the green cap from the running buffer bottle. Hold it in a vertical position, but upside down, and gently apply four drops of buffer into the square buffer well. Again, without touching the bottom of the well with the tip. Be aware that holding the bottle sideways will produce invalid results. Now replace the green cap on the running buffer bottle. After about three minutes, a reddish color will spread across the strip in the test window as a signal that the lines are starting to appear. Read the results. After adding the running buffer, wait for at least 10 minutes, but no longer than 15 minutes, before reading the results. Reading test results earlier than 10 minutes or later than 15 minutes after the addition of running buffer to buffer well 2 may yield erroneous results. First, make sure that a reddish control line has formed above the C marking in the test window. If no control line is visible, then the test is invalid and a new test must be run. If no line has formed above the SYP and HIV markings in the test window, and a line is visible above the C marking in the test window, then the result is non-reactive, meaning that the patient is preliminarily negative for syphilis treponema and HIV-1 and or HIV-2 antibodies. Be aware that this does not necessarily exclude syphilis or HIV infection. If a reddish line is visible above the SYP marking and a line is visible above the C marking in the test window, then the result is reactive for syphilis, 
meaning that the patient is preliminarily positive for syphilis treponema antibodies. If a reddish line is visible above the HIV marking and a line is visible above the C marking in the test window, then the result is reactive for HIV, meaning that the patient is preliminarily positive for HIV-1 and or HIV-2 antibodies. If reddish lines are visible above the SYP and HIV markings in the test window, and a line is visible above the C marking in the test window, then the result is reactive for both syphilis and HIV, meaning that the patient is preliminarily positive for syphilis treponema and HIV-1 and or HIV-2 antibodies. Be aware that the presence of any reddish color in a given test line, along with a visible control line, is considered reactive. Finally, if a reddish control line has not formed above the C marking in the test window, regardless of whether or not test lines are present above the SYP and HIV markings, then the test is invalid and a new test must be performed. DPP Reader You can also use the DPP Reader to interpret your results. Start by pressing the black button on the side to turn the reader on. When the display reads, Ready, insert the DPP test, at least 10 minutes but no later than 15 minutes after adding the running buffer from the green cap bottle. The reader will display the word testing for a few seconds before the results are shown.